Yeah, welcome back to this se second segment. In the first segment, we explained clearly, and we showed you the scriptures, that God has sworn with an oath, which he will not change his mind about, according to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 20 to 25, that the Son of God is a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. And let me just remind us that this is Spirit, Soul, and Body TV, and this is Joshua Lawyer Bagway, your friendly host. And uh, don't forget there are the telephone on the screen. There's also uh, a website. Visit our website. There's also the Instagram pages and the you know uh, and the uh, Twitter. Send us a message. We shall be happy to get your comments, your testimonies, your questions, and your prayer points. Let us just say a word of uh, exhortation now about the role of the high priest. Now, if the high priest. Uh, let's look at the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. The high priest is somebody that first and foremost ministers to God. Okay? Yeah. The high priest does what? Ministers to God. So Jesus Christ also, as the high priest to God, must minister to him. Look at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the summary, the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary, <clears throat> and of the true tabernacle, with the Lord set up, with the Lord pitched, and not man. So you can see that he's a minister of the sanctuary of God. And in verse 3, this is the King James, he says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. <laughs> Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. So you can see that the Son of God, the Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as the high priest, one of his roles, his primary role, is to offer ministration to God. This ministration is in different ways. Let me just give you two or three different ways now. The first way of ministering to God by a high priest is worship. Worship. Now, Many people don't know that Jesus Christ is a worshiper of God because of some of the doctrines which we grew up with. Okay, But if you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, especially the Hebrews 12, chapter 2, verse 12, you will see that Jesus Christ as the high priest is worshiping God, is leading the believers to worship God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, right? In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse... 11 and 12. He says, um, let's start from verse 11. He says, but for both he, that is Jesus, that sanctifies, that makes us holy, and he himself, I mean, he that sanctifies us, and they, we who are sanctified, are all of one. Most of the versions will say, all have one father, are of the same family, okay? For which cause, is not ashamed to call them brethren. So Jesus Christ calls us his brethren. Hebrews 2, 11. Jesus Christ, the true Christ, Messiah Yeshua, calls us his brethren. And in verse 12, he says, I will declare your name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto you? Can you see that? So Jesus Christ is leading us to worship God, to sing praise to him, to sing hymns of praise to the almighty God, our Father. Okay? I like that verse 11. He said, for both he, both Jesus Christ, Yeshua Amashad, who sanctified us, who made us holy, and we who are sanctified, all of us, all of you, right, listening to me right now, and me, myself, and those who have followed Jesus Christ to the Father. Yeah, I remember John 14, 6, he said, I'm the way, the fruit, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus Christ, he said, that simply means in Hausa, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And so when you come to the Father through Christ, you will see that even in heaven right now, Christ is the high priest. Okay? Let's look at, again, another rule of the high priest. Another rule of the high priest is intercession. Intercession. That means praying to God. Praying to God. Now, we have read it already, but let's just quickly take it again. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, and in verse 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 7, in verse 24 and 25. It says, But this man, 
because he continued ever, right, has an unchangeable priesthood. I'm going to come back to that part of the scripture that says that Jesus continued ever. Because again, this is another truth many people don't remember or know, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead bodily. Okay? He was raised from the dead bodily. So the body that made him a man that, you know, was crucified, when he died, he came back again alive. But I'll take that later. Let's just finish with verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25. He says, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Through Christ we come unto God. Wherefore, Jesus say is, is doing what? He lived to make intercession for us, for them. So you can see that the second role of the high priest is to do what? Is to intercede for us, to pray to God on our behalf. Remember that in his first role, he's ministering to God. He's leading us to worship God. Okay. In fact, I think I should make a, 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 a clear demarcation here. I think we already have three rules. The first rule is totally high priest ministering to God. It's between him and God. Remember that there's a covenant between God and Christ. Okay. In that covenant between God and Christ, when Christ laid his life down, God said to him, in obedience to God, he laid his life down. The Bible says God now raised him from the dead. In obedience to God, he died. And when he died, God raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. Okay? And he said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. So in that position of being raised from the dead, Christ is ministering to God. Okay. Christ is ministering to God. That's the first role of the high priest in this particular instance. And the scripture is Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 okay now the second role is the one that it leads us to worship god the one we saw in hebrew chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 it's also in the book of revelation chapter 2 from verse 2 to 4 you will see that the believers who have overcome the antichrist beast right they join him to sing the song of the lamb to worship god in verse 3 and 4 and then of course if you now look at the third role that is his interceding to God that is Hebrew chapter 7 verse 25 for so, uh, verse uh, 25 it says wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them okay now it's also in Romans chapter 8 in Romans chapter 8 verse 34 you will see that uh, it is written it says um, who is he that condemned it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us so you can see that the role of the high priest number three is to pray for us is to make intercession for us to God again many people don't get this point this series of teachings is actually materials for Bible colleges is materials for Bible school in your Bible studies in your churches is material for theological institutes, theological universities, because the Spirit of God has anointed me and our ministry, Abba Father Assembly, to bring some truths into the world that hitherto were hidden. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 29 29, it said, The hidden things belong to God. Deuteronomy 29 29. He said, The hidden things belong to God, but the things that He has revealed are for us and for our children that we may do them. So please take time to read the scriptures that we have given to you. And if you have any questions, please remember the phone number is on the screen, 0803-702-1239. You can also send an email to us, pastor at abafatherassembly.org. Our website is also there. The fourth role of the high priest, as I round up this segment, is that it's an example to other priests. You see, we are priests under Christ. He is our high priest. If you go to the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, and this is very important. I will just take one extra minute to explain this part. Okay? In Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, we are told that all believers in Christ have been made priests and kings unto God, and we shall reign on this earth. So we are reigning priests and kings unto God. And Christ has made us to become priests. In the Old Testament, only the Aaronic family, the Levitical priesthood, could be priests unto God. The rest, 11 tribes, were all, you know, forbidden to enter the temple. 
But under Christ, we have been reconciled back to the Father God, and now we can be priests to God. And finally, remember that as priests, we must take our example from Christ, our high priest. That's why Hebrews 12 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, uh, who, who uh, laid down his life for us. I, I can read it in verbatim. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let's look at it carefully. It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set in, in front of him enjoyed the cross, despising the shame. And is now set at our right at the right hand of God. Remember that it's also Romans 8:29 that we Jesus Christ is our is our pattern son. We look unto him, we are conformed to him, and through him we become all that God wants us to be. That is the fourth role of the high priest. Let's take a time out now. When we come back, we shall look at another dimension of the high priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. This is Joshua Egbagbe. Spirit, Soul, and Body TV of Abba Father Assembly.